he, uh, well, the, the, the founding mind behind it was Sir Kenneth Clark, who at the time was the very young director of the National Gallery. I think he was in his sort of mid-30s, but incredibly well-connected. And from the beginning, Clark wanted to, to have artists to create a record. He wasn't that interested and never was, even during the war, in you know, more propaganda, in more sort of short-term consciousness raising or, or morale boosting. He wanted to get the sort of best artists of the day to be creating images that then would be serve as a record of, of what the hostilities had been like for, for Britain. And, for, and its people. So there was a sort of discussion as to whether it was going to be the Ministry of Labour or this soon to, to come in existence Ministry of Information who would be the sort of umbrella organisation for the War Artists Advisory Committee and uh, eventually there was a sort of Whitehall turf war and it was decided that it would go to the Ministry of Information which had actually the better sort of contacts and Lord Macmillan successfully lobbied for the Treasury get to give it give this new committee, uh, I think about just over five thousand pounds to get it off the ground. In uh, that was the late late August nineteen thirty nine, and then they had their first meeting in uh, sort of mid November nineteen thirty nine with Clark very much in charge as the chair, and then there was this. A uh, chap who was seconded from the, I think, Ministry of Ed Education, uh, who was Edward Montgomery O'Rourke Dickey. You could make him up. But he was the secretary, and he'd been the secretary for about two and a half years. Sort of quite a character in his own right. And then they, uh, Clark recruited heads of various art schools to also sit on the committee whereas the various armed services suggested their own representatives. And then representing the Royal Air Force, probably the most interesting character, was the then squadron leader, eventually Air Commodore, Harold Peake. But he was the, uh, was thanks to him, that the RAF was the sort of first of the three services to actually have its own sort of dedicated PR department. And the idea was that each service would have at least sort of two artists and they would decide with Clark and the members of the committee and the service representatives which service got which artist.